Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Hun the Hound here for another story time. This one's in VR chat again because, I don't know, I kind of like the aesthetic. It's really cool. We're at a pool at a hotel, and uh, it's a great way to tell a story about a furry convention. So the furry convention I want to talk to you about this time, if you didn't see in the title, was uh, Furry Delphia. That was the first time I went. I went with uh, my fiance Delta and my girlfriend Jeannie, and it was it was very interesting. I expected something different, but end up having a good time so to start with let's talk about getting there from where i live in ohio to furry delphia or philadelphia sorry uh it's about a, it was about an eight hour drive but due to i don't know roads the google maps calculating wrong it took like seven and a half we did run into a little problem we were driving with the rain cloud so the rain was going with us and just the buick for just no reason um i've had this fixed before but it just comes back randomly it loses uh, trash control and power steering and stability tracks and ABS um, because like one of the wheel hubs, if it doesn't read it right, it just freaks out and turns off everything. So we're driving in the rain, no trash control, no ABS. Uh, there was once or twice that we hydroplane. The cars up ahead were slower, like like almost stopped. I hit the brake and as soon as I hit the brake, I started drifting to the right. And I'm like, oh, so I'm like lightly hitting the brake. We do eventually get there. Parking was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, we had to unload the car. Jeannie had got into the hotel before us because I put it in her name and let her get her stuff. But she, we unloaded the car. She jumped in the car and she was telling me where to drive to park in the big parking garage. And uh, driving almost all the way up to the top, finally found a parking garage, which is great because it's like within a short, like you can see it from the hotel. It's not like a, a super long walk like you'd be at Anthrocon. Getting there, I saw um, one of my favorite YouTubers who finally I got to see them in suit. I got to see Remote Bird. They're the first person I took a picture of, and I got to get a picture of them when I was in for a suit too later. The hotel itself kind of had a 70s, like 80s vibe, I guess. I, I don't, I'm bad at guessing stuff like that. I was only alive for the end of the 80s. But anyway, the hotel was actually really nice and it was a little confusing because there was, you know, three different escalators and trying to remember what was on what floor. Um, you get used to it after a while. The area. See, the thing I always talk about whether or not a furry convention is good, like I said about Anthrocon, is location, location, location. Anthrocon is not just great because of where just because of the convention site. It's great because of the stuff around it. Now, because I didn't know the area very well, I trust a genie on it. But from what I saw this weekend. Yeah, people weren't all like, ooh, there's a furry con, yay, we're all excited, as they were at AC, but still, it was fun to walk around uh, downtown Philly in fursuit. We went to Wawa's, which I made a video about that, and that was pretty interesting. It wasn't a normal Wawa's, I think it was without the gas station, it was kind of just in an uh, office complex building. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, so Friday, we get there, we get in a hotel, we kind of relax. I told myself I wasn't going to fursuit until... Saturday. I was only going to fursuit one day. And what did I do? I fursuited Friday, which is the, the video of you seeing me and Jeannie run around with me in fursuit, full suit, is that Friday. And we're just running around seeing the craziness, and I get to drive in a race car simulator, and I, I got pretty tired, and I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Send it. So I hit the wall on purpose and, you know, pretend to smash into the, you know, to the steering wheel IRL, and uh, the car spins and spins and spins and spins and spins. <laughs> and I really broke it because it spun for a while. Delta, unfortunately, wasn't feeling good, so she stayed back and, and just stayed in a hotel and laid down and relaxed. I tried not to be out too late, but I actually got to talk to the chairman of Wapafa, which was a very nice experience, and talk to him about my furry camp thing, World Wild Fur Camp. And uh, he gave me like a thumbs up. So I, I really appreciate that. Thank you for talking to me. You're a really cool dude. I mean, it's Manic. I don't need I don't want to make it a secret. I was talking to Manic. He's a really good person and very thoughtful of what he does. But anyway, that's besides the point. Getting home at 1 a.m. or getting back to the hotel at 1 a.m. Crash, go to sleep. Saturday morning was the day or Saturday was the day we had everything planned. We had it on a Google calendar of what we wanted to do when we were going to go see it. So the first thing we want to do is see the dealer's den but the dealer's den wasn't like ac ac the dealer's den is it opens on, like on a certain day at a certain time and everyone rushes in and since philadelphia is a bit smaller 
it was already open on a Friday, like pretty early. And I was like, oh, okay, so there's no rush to get in, which was really nice. You know, most cons, when they have a adult section, like an MFF, it was just Bad Dragon and like not much else. This adult section wasn't Bad Dragon. It was Primal Hardware. It was kind of neat to see this company, uh, you know, in person, I guess you could say. So I won't get much more into that. But yes, they had an adult section at Furry Delphia and a few other like body pillows and shirts and, and other stuff like that. I was very you know, telling myself not to buy because where am I going to wear, you know, half of these the clothing? I'm not wearing them in public. The dealer's den itself was not too bad. I was used to Anthrocon where it was just a giant hall of dealers. But this was nice and small and you can kind of get to all the different dealer den spots pretty easily. So Saturday was the day that I was going to full suit. We're going to full suit to almost every panel in the afternoon that we wanted to go to. The first one, which we wanted to go to, but didn't, was how well could I beat up your fursona species? Species. Screw it. We'll do it live. We didn't make it to that one because we were trying to get ready for some other things. But we made it to the first suit photo, which wasn't as bad as the Anthrocons, which was three hours long, it felt like. But we got the picture done. I haven't seen it yet. I got to go see where that's at. And it's kind of the same thing. They took a bunch of pictures and stitched it together. The next panel, which I was excited for, was furry YouTube and TikTok panel meet. I thought it was going to be some kind of structured thing where people come in, ask the panel host some questions, and I offered to help and stuff like that. But what it turned into was, okay, everybody just come up here and let's talk. And let's just do stuff. And I kind of lost interest because I didn't really know anybody. So I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in a full suit. I don't need to be running around. I'm very short on time with my heat. I'm just going to go. So after, you know, a few hours in full suit, I was pretty much done. And we tried to go to the dance comp. We couldn't quite make it, Delta and I. So Jeannie went to in support of Punky. If y'all didn't know, Punky and uh, Jeannie switched fursuits at the dance comp. And poor Brenda Banks looked very confused on what was going on. And then in the most cringy way, Jeannie in Punky's fursuit ran across the stage going, Wee! I'm like, oh, God. Um, I don't think it had the effect that she was hoping. But yeah, whatever. But after that, we had a little time to get some food, ordered pizza, and then uh, it was almost time for the panel I was really excited for, which was the regular car reviews live. And the line for that was pretty good, and I'm glad I got in there as quick as I could because the room filled up pretty quick. After a bit, it was standing room only. And the, for that panel, that was talking about what is furry car culture. We know what furry culture is, but what is furry car culture? And what it ended up being was just as I described to regular later. Circular, yeah. Circular uh, question. Circle yeah. yeah, there we go. Um, just kind of talking about what furry cars were, how to identify a furry car. We didn't really get to the point of what furry car culture is. But the non-car person next to me, Delta, went, I got an answer. And I'm like, regular, look, look. So she's holding her hand up. Like, just, just let her answer. And Delta's like, you know, I'm not a... I'm a furry, but I'm not a car person. Furry car culture is furry culture, meaning it is something that we're super interested in and that we like a lot and that we talk about, you know, just kind of the idea of like, just furry. But for regular, there was a good answer, but that's not an answer that you can tell a normie, a, a person outside of the fandom. That's just kind of a non-answer. I mean, it's true. It, it's a true answer to us, but it, it's hard to describe to an outer person. So later that night, we went, went to see another panel that I was excited for, but didn't know what to expect, was Hark! Keep Your Virginity! The panel was run by a YouTuber and her friend's name, Hannah. I don't remember her last name, but she's a pretty big YouTuber in the animation world. I don't think she's furry, but she was just here, kind of, you know, she's very furry adjacent. She makes the YouTube series Satina, where, you know, this guy knocked up a demon and they had a daughter. It's a very cute series, by the way. But the point of the panel was to, you know... The point of the panel in a satirical way was to keep your virginity and, and to show how to stay pure. The real, you know, underlying tone of it was how Christianity has kind of screwed up people's sex lives. Being pure until marriage and not even holding hands is kind of fucked up some people by the time they actually get married. Stories of people like so afraid of sex, they were so shamed by it that they could never be good enough as a Christian that when they eventually found someone and got married... They still couldn't have sex. They felt so much shame and guilt from it. And I think it was a very informative panel. And I feel like actually like a lot of Christians really should have been there. Um, I think they were preaching to the choir of people that know the downfalls of certain parts of Christianity. Uh, I, I hope something like that could be filmed and, and put on, you know, viewable for more people. 
So I didn't get to go to furry karaoke. I don't know. I just kind of wasn't in the mood for it. Sometimes I don't want to hear people sing, you know, songs horribly and ruin songs for me. So Delta kind of went off on her own and it was so busy. She was stuck down there for hours. And I think she eventually just gave up and we all went to bed. Sunday, which I have a video about, was the furry car show. It was on the top of the parking garage and like a floor or two down. And I highly enjoyed that. That was really fun to meet. Some of the people that you see on the regular Car Reviews channel uh, in their cars, like Jay, and uh, I forgot the lady's name with the Regal. I'm so sorry. And what else did I see? Just a lot of cars I've seen before. If you want to see the video on that, it's on my channel, Furry Delphia Car Show. It may or may not be posted by now. Delta had brought her box car, and you know we were all supposed to have matching cars and run around in them to match the theme. But it didn't happen. So I was expecting Delta to make one with like paint on it and look like good. But no, it was just markered on like a <laughs> like a kindergartner, which actually worked in its favor. A lot of people actually liked it, got in it, took pictures of it. And we will be auctioning that off at World Wild Fur Camp once people sticker bomb it for charity for YMCA uh, Camp Wilson, which is where we're at now. Halfway through, Jeannie had to kind of kick off. So that's why I was filming the rest of it. She had to get ready for the talent show. And when I was kind of done standing in the sun and fursuit baking myself, I headed towards the talent show. The talent show was kind of a mess, mainly on my fault, not not the panels. I tried to film Ginny with my GoPro on the stage, but she was so far back and it was just a low angle. It was stupid. So then I whipped out my you know, DSLR and started filming with that and it kind of worked. And then I whipped out my phone and started filming with that because it had Steadicam. So a lot of these shows... If if I ever post them, a lot of the different acts I filmed from the front row look differently because one's with the DSLR and one's with the phone. And for the first time ever, my phone actually overheated. Apparently having the ultra stability mode and 4K and all those stuff really overheats a phone. So first we had Ginny singing. And then I'm sorry if I'm not going to remember these in order. Then a ballerina. And then uh, one of Ginny's friends, Cooper, who's in one of my other videos, for ruining my scene. <laughs> um he did some like anime dance and his wife sang his wife i'm gonna hopefully play a little bit his wife belted it oh she was amazing and then one of my followers and fellow friends in vr chat sky she got up on stage and sang and it was really funny because she's not I'm not calling you out. I'm sorry, dear. It was just funny how it happened. Me and your me and your boyfriend were sitting next to each other and we're both very particular about technical things and, and how things work and stuff like that. So you're singing with the microphone down here and you're looking at him, but we're both going microphone higher up, up. And you kept like putting the microphone higher so we can hear you and then dropping it back down. And me and him are both going up, up, <laughs> which is really funny. And eventually you had it did pretty good singing. It just. I don't know, like some people don't like the fact that the regular vocals was that wouldn't like the fact that the regular vocals were there. But I think it helped because, you know, it's just like it's a duet. Yay. It would help me, especially with my horrible singing. But then the moment no one was waiting for because they didn't know what's happening. Sky proposed to her boyfriend, Nico, and they said yes. And it was cute. And oh, my God. The hosts for the talent show were pretty interesting as well. The 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 first suitor, I couldn't hear him very well. He needed to, he didn't want to deep throat the mic, but eventually he started deep throating the mic. And his his first suit was interesting because he had big eyebrows that he could move up and down, and his ears would you know move around. I think it was like one of those, like a long time ago, they had those cat ear things that like clip on your ear and then on your brain, and then it like moves from your emotions. I think that's what that was. Probably heavily modified to match in his first suit. So Chest of the Jeru also sang. That was uh that was something that was really cool to see. Yeah, the con filmed it, but they didn't get my angle. I was up front and in his face while singing. I loved it. <laughs> At the end, they gave out several awards. I don't remember what they were. Chester Giroux got one. Sky got one. 
Um, and then this guy, Tommy, he did like an interpretive flag dance at the end. It was, it was pretty interesting. So yeah. And then we had to, had to take Jeannie home in, in Jersey and then drive back. And it wasn't too bad because we didn't have weather and, and oh my God, people in Jersey and Philly just drive so fast. The sp- the speed limit was 55 and I'm going 80 just so I don't get in people's way in traffic. People are still zooming past me. So we made up pretty good time. Got home probably about 9, 10. We had to stop and get food halfway and, you know, get gas and stuff like that. But that was uh, my Philadelphia trip. The next event is World Wild Fur Camp, which I don't know if I'll do a story time for because, well, I... I'm running the thing. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much, and have a good day. (laughs) Bye-bye. There's a lot of friction. Hot dogs. Fire once was a hot dog. That's how you got here.